Hi everybody, Jeff Simon here for Social Flight and I wanted to kick off 2023 with a very special treat that's a complete walk around to bring you all up to speed on our Titan T51D Mustang build. You guys have hung with us for so many videos, many of which are really specific on how to do something that is maybe a small part of this aircraft. So I want to make sure we get a chance to step back and see the entire build and give you a sense of where we actually are and how close we are to getting this thing into the air. Let's take a look from our house into the shop, which of course used to be a dining room and living room. <laughs> so as you can see, here's the Mustang. Now it's very deceiving because a lot of parts have come on and off and are just waiting to go right back on. Matter of fact, if I come this way and you look down here, the entire side skin, doors and all, ready to go, ready to pop on. That's this thing just needs to have this, you know, these just remounted. It's all here. Um, and so even though it looks a little bare bones now, it's all, you know, ready to go. We've spent so much time on the systems. So let's go from tail to nose and back again. I'll show you a little bit about where we are. I'm going to head back this way. Starting here at the tail, basically our tail is just about done. It's just about everything that's in here. The uh, automatic trim's done. Uh, everything has been set up here, but it has to keep coming, at least for the horizontals, has to keep coming off and on in order to get access to things. We're working on just the last bit of ca uh, cable pass-throughs, and then also uh, we'll be working on the tips and getting that done as well. Now, uh, under here, you can see we've got a couple cables. These are our, the uh, RG400 cables that are going to be used for the glide slope and the nav, because for Avidyne IFD 550, we uh, have the uh, complete IFR capabilities of both radio and GPS navigation. And uh, based on all of that, we're using our comment antennas, and we will have blade antennas going in right down here that uh, very similar to what you might have seen on, for example, if you look at uh, a lot of aircraft, they've got blade antennas. But in this position, if you look at perhaps like the V-tail Bonanzas tend to use these, um, uh, these uh, blade antennas in that same type of a position. So it's an approved location that works very, very well. Now, uh, moving forward from that, we've got our smoke tank. And, um, and the smoke tank itself here is uh, uh, custom, and uh, it's all mounted, it's all ready to go, and allows us to have an awful lot of fun here. Uh, that side panel that I showed earlier has a little door that allows us to undo this cap, fill that up as well. As we come forward from that, um, we, uh, uh, we used a smoke system, which is smokesystemhelper.com. Great folks for anyone who wants to add smoke to their aircraft, uh, go check out Smoke System Helper. And this is the pump for it. So this is a very low pressure system, of course. We're drawing in, we go to this, and then we go forward from here. The next thing that you see back here that's part of our build, of course, is going to be the autopilot, which started as a true track and is now a Bendix King system since they have gone and, and purchased true track. And this is our pitch servo back here. Again, I'm so excited because all of this stuff is just functional now. It's working, it's in. We're just trying to get the last bit set before we really button it all up. Moving forward, we get to our EarthX batteries. I'm a huge fan of EarthX, and one of the nice things about this is that we have two batteries in one. Um, this allows us, in one location that is, this allows us to have a main battery and a backup battery. Dual solenoids back here works really, really, really well. And, um, and so uh, very, very cool setup there. Um, and so that, that works. And then right next to those solenoids that we have over here, is this relay box, this control box, so that we're not putting any high current through our gear system, at least not through the micro switches, and that's a nice little, uh, little thing that we did there. Uh, this is a, a cool section, of course, has our push-pull tubes, uh, everything's in here. Next thing in this section to kind of orient you to, it's a little hard to see, but here and there, this is our uh, reserve tank. This is our reserve fuel tank, and the line that comes down from the reserve fuel tank 
and we have this all electrically controlled. So both a, a valve, a solenoid controlled valve for this, as well as our fuel pump to ensure that we move fuel out of this as quickly as possible. Now it would go through gravity feed down to our main tanks when it's time for us to transfer reserve fuel, but uh, it's, I think it's really going to work a lot better against the head pressure of having those tanks have uh, fuel in them by having both the solenoid, uh, solenoid valve and the pump. All of this comes out and it all starts moving forward. So I'm going to switch a little bit over now to this side. Uh, so much of this work that, again, keeps taking a long time is this prep for the future to have everything the way that we want it. And one of the cool things is external power. So we brought from each of the batteries a separate plug. And now this part is going to be closed up in the future. But this is going to be open. This is going to be our rear baggage compartment access. So you'll have a door through here. Jake and Ben made this great plexiglass door that comes up in this compartment so that you can see and inspect and have access going back into this area. And then you can take this plug, which will come from uh, either charging or from a ground power unit, uh, and just reach in through here and get that plug mounted into place. It just clicks right in. Very, very cool that it'll do that. And, um, and then you can just go from, go from there. So I like that it'll just, it'll just do that. It's gonna make our life a lot easier in the future to do a lot of ground power things. We just went on um, Amazon, did this system here, which is great. It's, uh, it's got a lot of power. This is a 50 watt power supply and uh, uh, very, very simple. Sorry, 50 amp, 50 watt, 50 amp power supply, which is great because you got to pull a lot of amps when you're cycling the gear. And so when we're doing uh, testing, when we're doing development or uh, regular maintenance inspections for condition inspections, um, we're going to have very, very easy access for that as well as for charging the batteries. Next, when we talk maintenance access, which is so much of a priority for all the work that we've done, you get to this section. And in this section here, you can see we've still got some cables and wires to tie up, but this whole panel comes out. This is what you're looking in. This will normally be a floor of the aircraft and it all comes out. But there's two levels to this. The first level is where you can see all these wires as well as the relays that are right back here. And those relays are what control the, all of the electric trim and uh, smoke system, etc. So that all goes through there. And then we also have a cable that's used for our belly scoop uh, exit, air exit door, which controls the cooling of the aircraft. Um, now, if we go down, there's another level that, uh, that moves away, another access door. That takes us into the plenum, the entire cooling section. Haven't mounted it yet. Whoops, actually just dropped it. Haven't mounted it yet, but there's a fan down there that's going to mount to the radiator. Now that is not a, a standard part of the Mustang build, but we talked to lots of owners. And if you want to be able to run on the ground a lot, since it's a water-cooled engine and the radiator's in the uh, scoop, so if you want the ability of doing that either extended ground time, like you're at Oshkosh or something like that, or of course during all the testing we're going to be doing once this engine's running, it's really helpful to have a fan. And it's modular, so if we decide later we just don't want it, just unplugs, unbolts, comes out, you're done. So uh, that's a nice thing to have. Next, we've done a lot of stuff recently on the cabin of the aircraft, and we are getting close to putting the canopy on here too. The windshield's all done, it's just not mounted at the moment. The glare shield's all done, that's all just not mounted at the moment. But if we go and bring everything online here, as you've seen in some of the recent videos, you'll be able to see a lot of things come to life. Um, and, uh, and this is very, very uh, kind of exciting to see. Again, we've covered this in a lot of the other videos, but, but there's been a fair amount of work done recently on uh, this uh, center console. It's not mounted directly in place. It's just kind of loosely put into place right now. But that's going to have uh, fuel transfer controls, uh, our fuel level, lighting, all sorts of things. We'll talk about that in another video coming up. Uh, and also, there is a great video that we're working on at the moment with uh, my good friend and an amazing upholstery guy. Just the guy is an artisan, Howard Priest. And um, his work is fantastic. And so there's a little swatch here, I'll give you a sneak peek. This will become the color of our seats interior and some other tidbits we're gonna put in here, including the boots at the bottom of the flight controls. 
uh, and our sticks. And so uh, I'll tell you, when I hold this color up against the gray that's in here, it is just gorgeous. So that is a sneak peek you're getting for how these seats, and I'll tell you, there's gonna be some special tips and tricks involved in that as well. So that'll be fun when we actually get to that. The panel you've actually seen, we've uh, uh, got going across here, our, uh, our UAvionics AV20. Uh, we've got the RC Allen backups here. We've got a JPI. Now I just disconnected fuel pressure. That's why it's showing bad there. But uh, we've got the Aspen. We've got Avidine here. Go and get these guys all lit up and activated. Um, so that's all been in a lot of recent things that, uh, that we've done. Uh, in the video and then going down our audio panel, etc. Moving back a little, or actually forward in the aircraft a little bit, this little piece of paper I showed you guys later, this is how we're actually testing our camera. But in here, we've still got to do our brake lines. So we've got our brake lines all set. Our pitot-static system has to be done. That's coming up in a video to be released soon. Um, and then once all that's done, these panels here, we've already finished them. So once we finally say it's okay to rivet this stuff and lose access, except for our access panels, this thing's gonna to go together very quickly. Um, coming forward to this point, this is our forward baggage compartment. Our forward baggage compartment has a floor that's not in place at the moment, and below it is our uh, heating system. Uh, really want the ability of being able to fly year round. Uh, and of course, we're located up near Boston, so it does get a little cool, uh, chilly in the winter. And uh, this system for our heating will go into place. We've got some stuff as well that's going to go in to support the engine and its instruments. Coming forward and around the firewall, we've got our uh, engine computer already mounted, and the harness is already done for that. So that'll click into place when we mount our engine. Our engine is uh, already uh, waiting for us in the garage. We just have, have to get it all mounted up as soon as this comes out of our living room and dining room. Coming around to this side of the, um, uh, of the aircraft and the nose just gives you a different angle on what's going on. We've got a little bit of cleanup to do with the wires, but <clears throat> we're pretty close. And our vertical power primary power system, the PPS, is here in the front. I love that unit. It's, um, it not only gets rid of uh, the things that would be kind of obvious, like having your solenoids or relays that are going to control uh, big things with the starter, etc. But it also provides all your circuit protection. It provides all your alerting for uh, failures in different modes in there. It even makes it possible for you to get an ammeter uh, uh, measurement through the JPI without having to put a shunt on. Uh, so a lot of different functions, very, very uh, simply done in one case. We still need to put in our engine controls for our prop and our throttle. We have those cables and we have everything done of, of these guys moving forward. So we just have to run the cables before we close this up. And then as we talked about before the canopy. Moving backwards we get here, we, we, uh, this is all going to be closed up. So the only access we're going to have, this is our reserve tank uh, uh, where we actually can fill it up. And then we have this panel is our access panel that we've talked about in the previous video that comes off. And so this will be the only access, even though we showed you things from the other side, this is the only way once it's closed that we're going to be able to get in here. Um, so we've got our hydraulic system with uh, the hydraulic up, down, and then the return when you dump that, that's all right here. And you can see everything else and it ends right back here with our Artex ELT 345 goes up to our ELT antenna here. This is our uh, Lynx transponder diversity antenna, uh, our comment antenna, which is a dual a VHF and GPS antenna. And uh, on the tip of our horizontal stabilizer, you can't really see it from here, is where our Aspen remote sensing module, or RSM, is. So that is a lot of talking and a really cool tour, hopefully, of where we are with our build. Things are gonna start moving quickly, and I'm gonna show you why when we step into our garage right now. All right, this is really exciting. Now I'm gonna show you something that you have not seen before and also a part of our build and the part of the house that you haven't seen before. Let's hop into the garage. One of the reasons that I keep saying that the fuselage portion of this build, uh, even though it's, it's continued to get there and that we're still in the section 
that is kind of like building in the dining room and the living room. One of the reasons I keep saying that this is so significant that we're closing, getting close to closing out our fuselage is that we got, we've moved to this, our center section next, and Titan delivers this nearly completed. It is very, very cool. Now, this essentially is the bottom of the center of the aircraft, and that fuselage just mounts to this. You're seeing the bottom here, and of course, everything's vertical. So this is the tail towards the tail of the aircraft, that's towards the nose of the aircraft down there, and it's just sitting in this section. We've done some work, but it's really, um, uh, uh, you know, ready for us now to, when we finish that, to mount it to this. And when this comes from Titan, it's very uh, cool because they've actually gone and taken care of the landing gear. It's all mounted in place. Um, everything's here. This is just kind of shipping stuff. It's gorgeous the way that they've done it all. Um, this is their, uh, their high strength, their three inch gear. Um, that's there. It's got, you know, even the brakes are mounted. Uh, everything's in place. The struts are mounted in place. And so really it's about mounting lines. This will go and horizontally and we'll go and we'll put in our fuel tanks. So we'll be doing mainly lines. We'll be doing our electrical to let you know when the gear is up and down and fuel. So when you think about all that stuff between brakes and fuel, and a few electrical things, especially for micro switches in position. That's the big part of this, but the rest of it is done. It's gonna start looking like an airplane really, really quickly once we get it this completed and we get it put on that. And then the wings, which are currently sitting in our basement, are, um, they use a, uh, the forward portion of the wing, which is a D cell. It's wrapped in uh, wrapping foam with a spar that's already there. That's all done as well. So from what you really have to do is put on the ribs that go behind that, put on the rear skins that go behind that, flaps, ailerons, boom. And then uh, this airplane is going to start again, looking like a plane and getting us close to getting to the airport very, very soon. Let's go back inside and wrap up. So that's the kickoff to 2023. And I just want to thank everyone that helps uh, support this. All of you who watch uh, everything that we do, who use social flight to get out there and fly, who check out our apps and everything so that you can support general aviation. And I wanna especially thank all of the companies that support and make social flight possible for all of you. And that includes, as you see here, Aspen Avionics with their amazing Evolution PFD. I absolutely love it. Avidine, we've, you've seen, we use in the Bonanza of their navigator. We use it actually here in the Mustang. A huge, huge fan of Avidine. UAVionics uh, that's come on board this year to be able to support social flight with the AV30, the AV20, the Tail Beacon X, all of those cool products from them. Bose and their uh, headsets that are really great for both professional pilots and also for uh, oh, the rest of us in general aviation with the A20. Uh, Continental Aerospace Technologies, uh, their engines, of course, that we use their engines, their parts in the Bonanza, absolutely love it. L3 Lynx with their transponder. Lightspeed that um, uh, just came out with the Delta Zulu headset that even includes a CO detector built into it and custom mapping for pilots, uh, perhaps with the hearing challenges as well. Massimo Mighty Sat. Uh, I use their pulse oximeter. It has uh, really, really been helpful flying at night, flying at altitude as well. Tempest Aero, everything that they make, whether it be oil filters and spark plugs, everything from that whole company, fuel systems, you name it. And I'll tell you, with all the supply chain issues that have happened in the industry and the fact that Tempest has pushed through it and made it possible when other companies couldn't provide product for us in the fleet to still get oil filters and spark plugs, uh, I am just so grateful to them as well. Whip Air and uh, the, the amazing, we made a visit to them. There's a video for that. Their whole facility, they do not just floats, but they do avionics, they do paint and interior maintenance, you name it, that they do it out in South St. Paul. And of course, above all of this, with aircraft would not be possible if it weren't for Titan aircraft. John Williams over there and the entire team uh, I am just so, so grateful. Uh, they uh, have great support and have made all of this possible. And again, thanks to you for watching the videos, for being part of the Social Flight community, and for supporting General Aviation. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Blue skies.